Raider Nation, tough game. Rams ended up winning it. But if you guys love craft beer, well, I got something special for you. If you're drunk in love on the Raiders, I'm drunk in love on craft beer. I want you to head to Tavor.com right now. You're going to use that promo code CHATSPORTS for $10 off your very first purchase. Now I'm going to get into my second segment here, and it's Raiders stock up, stock down, and it's who played well and who didn't play well against the Rams this past week and what I would like to maybe see going forward. First guy who's got to stock up, and it's as high as could be, probably higher than Martavis Bryant ever was, and it's... Jared Cook, right? So this guy was an absolute monster this week, and he's probably the MVP of the Raiders, and he was an ultimate slam dunk, and he's the reason why I think the Raiders stayed in this game. He was the main focal point there. 12 targets is a huge guy for a guy like Derek Carr. I mean, he was picking up first downs, important first downs, and he was physical, dude. He was running over people, and I absolutely love seeing that from a guy like Jared Cook, who when he first came out was a really, really highly touted guy. So if he's finally getting it together now at age 30, I love seeing it. He did lead the Raiders in receiving yards. Hopefully he has another good week against the Broncos because, well, guess what? I'm playing him on FanDuel. I'm playing him everywhere because I think he's got a great, great matchup there. Again, when you just look at the overall makeup of that Broncos defense, I think is, you know, Jared Cook's going to have a big game. The next guy who's stuck I think is ultimately pretty high. It's Marshawn Lynch. It's our running back. It's beast mode. He had a great week. When you look at it, 11 carries, 41 yards. Sure, it's only 3.7 yards per carry, but they kept the Rams' offense off the field. And Marshall was a major focal point in that first quarter, and I think it's why the Raiders ultimately dominated the first quarter. They dominated that first half. The, when you can keep guys like Sue and you can keep guys like Aaron Donald huffing and puffing, even Brockers there, like that's what led to the Raiders being successful. And I think if we can keep continuing to pound the ball with a guy like Marshawn, who's still running like he's 25 years old, super physical, sure, maybe he doesn't run like, I don't know, peak meet Marshawn Lynch, but he's still looking really good to me. So stock up on Marshawn Lynch. The next guy whose stock is, I think, pretty high, who played really well, it's Terrier Whitehead. Now, Whitehead's kind of filling in that role. Obviously, Cleo Max not there anymore. He was probably going to be a little bit more defensive end. Uh, but he's also, I think, really filling in for Navarro Bowman. Let's not forget about Bowman, who had 89 tackles in only 10 games last year for the Raiders. And, well, Whitehead led the team in tackles this week with only six. But still, that's a Rams offense. That's really, really good. I mean, that Rams offense led the league in scoring last year. And when you look at Whitehead, ultimately, he stepped up big for the Raiders. And I think he's the captain right now on that Raiders defense. And, well, and if he can come up and lock down that run game hey sky's the limit for this guy whitehead who's also coming back coming off back to back 100 or 100 tackle season so all right guys i just gave you my mvps of week one for the raiders so who was your raiders week one mvp was it whitehead was it lynch i think it's cook but i want to know from you guys please comment who was the raiders week one mvp and well i guess uh i guess you could say i'm drunk in love and jared cook because he's mine and if you guys want to get drunk in love I got something for you. I need you to go to Tavor.com because these guys, if you guys like craft beer, this is what you can do, right? You're going to be able to curate your own little box of craft beer. They're going to deliver it to you. You're literally going to get a box of beer sent right to your door from breweries all over the world or all over the United States. So I, what I need you to do is I need you to go to Tavor.com, okay? Tavor.com. You're going to use that promo code CHATSPORTS, and you're going to get $10 off. And then, hey, hit me up on Twitter, at Mitchell C65. Show me what you guys got. I'll retweet it because Tavor, those guys are legit, just like the Rangers, right? All right, now I'm going to get into some stock downs, and this one pains me a little bit, and then I'm going to start off with this one with our quarterback, Derek Carr. So his stock's got to be down. 303 yards, three interceptions, and those three interceptions, I think is what ultimately lost the Raiders the game. I and mean, when you win time of possession, when you have basically the exact same amount of first downs, so the Raiders had 20 first downs, Rams had 23, we had more yards, one again, time of possession, but the three turnovers compared to the Rams, zero turnovers, well, that hurt. And then when you look at the his turnovers in general, like that first interception, that led to a Rams score. Pick six, obviously didn't help, and then I don't know what the hell he was doing on the second interception, but when you're paying this guy as much money as we are, he can't have three interceptions, especially in critical moments. So Raiders stock down, number one, it's got to be Derek Carr. The next stock down, and this one pains me to say it, even though I kind of expected it, is Amari Cooper. So Amari Cooper, he did add weight this offseason. I get it, right? He added that extra 14 pounds. He's up to 225 pounds. But, man, only three targets, one catch for nine yards. I understand the Rams have great cornerbacks who are physical. But if this guy is supposed to be the main focal point of our offense, the main vein, as John Gruden said, three targets isn't cutting it. So 48 catches last year, 680 yards, seven touchdowns. Sure, a career high in touchdowns. But if Amari was year four, 
24 years old, this guy has a lot of talent. Uh, Amari, you gotta get it going, and you have another tough matchup against the Broncos, I get it, but come on, man, let's get that stock up. And then the last stock down, well, this goes to a collective unit, it's the Raiders' defensive line. So, Jared Goff had all day, like, literally all day to throw last night, and it was super frustrating to watch because, I'll be honest, I think even me, maybe Joe Flacco, maybe my roommate Cam Rogers could get some passes done with the amount of time that he, that Jared Goff was getting in. Well, with only one sack, that was coming from Bruce Irving on a play that literally took five seconds for Irving to get it. That's just not going to cut it. And when you're not going to bring a guy like Khalil Mack back, man, we got to get more pressure on the quarterback because we don't have the secondary depth to be able to control wide receivers that the Rams had. So stock down on the Raiders defensive line. So guys, I gave you guys my LVPs. It's Derek Carr. Cooper, and then the defensive line. So I want to know from you, who was the Raiders week one LVP? The most least valuable player. So I want to know from you, for me, it's Derek Carr, and I think it just has to be that. I mean, when you're looking at the amount of money we're paying him, he was the leader, and just three really, really costly turnovers that just, well, it really hurt us. It put us in a hole, and they, the Rams ended up scoring points, and that's what good teams do. So who was your the Raiders week one LVP? Guys, please comment it below. Shout out to Tavor. Dot com And if you guys like craft beer, I need you to go to promo, use the promo code chat sports when you visit Tavor.com. Raider Nation, that's all I got on tap for you guys today. Please follow me on Twitter at MitchellRens365. And I'll be back on Monday for the next Raiders report. So until then, go Raiders.